I recently came back from a short vacation and apparently our place had had a power failure. Upon walking in the house, I discovered our subwoofer was motorboating. Uh, no signal uh, going into it. It was just plugged in. I should have unplugged it when we left. Uh, and despite surge suppressors, uh, the amp apparently had gone bad. Uh, the power supply capacitor and the amplifier, depending who you talk to, it would be one or the other. But uh, it, wa it wasn't worth taking it into the shop from what I could discover. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, PartsExpress.com uh, has a wonderful supply of parts. In this case, the subwoofer was one of their subwoofer kits I had gotten about uh, eight years ago. I think it was 2010. Uh, and, you know, it went together very nicely. The amplifier uh, just went on it. I went on the website, didn't find what I was looking for, called them. Sure enough, they had a drop-in replacement uh, substitute uh, plate amplifier that was 10 watts stronger than the old one and it was a drop in the driver was fine in this case and this is a simple repair just about anyone this can is, do in reality one of the easiest fixes you can do 12 screws you pull the old one out disconnect the uh, speaker pop the new one in 12 screws reconnect the speaker and you're all set now for that second half with the reinstallation i sort of left a step out because obviously once you put the back plate on how are you going to reconnect the speaker uh, because I couldn't grab the plate amp to remove it in the beginning I also pulled the driver which in this case made the speaker connection easier because the older speaker had a press-on connector as opposed to a push-on connector like you you know spade connector as you'll see on most uh, speakers so really very simple and it's not just their own brand that they take care of about uh, 10 years ago I had a Klipsch subwoofer go bad again drop-in replacement for the uh, amplifier turned out in that case the driver was bad also they had a direct replacement drop-in driver that speaker's still going years later and it's outliving the original one. So, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy this. It is not a great revelation, just shows you how simple the repair can be. This is a Dayton Titanic 10-inch subwoofer that I got from Parts Express, oh, in 2008. It's been a dependable performer. It has a plate amp in the back. It has a 240 watt plate amp in the back and it's been very dependable in the time I've had it until yesterday when I returned from a vacation and discovered it was motorboating which I believe is due to a power surge while we were gone. So even though we have power suppressor, surge suppressors on the house. Uh, it appears to have affected this. Now it is possible it's just old age and something went bad, but uh, it's not working. If you're not familiar with motorboating, hang on a second, I will plug it in and you'll know what it sounds like. that is motor boating. Uh, there's something going wrong in the power supply, whether it's a capacitor or the, or I should say the amplifier, whether it's a capacitor or the power supply, I'm not sure, but it's really not worth going into, uh, digging into it. A 10 year old amplifier that's only going to cost me $150 to replace is not worth the work. Now, Parts Express has been a great source of parts and here since this was one of their speakers, even better. They have a drop-in amplifier for it that's 250 watts, which is 10 more than I had. Uh, the driver's still in good shape and is about the equivalent of what they're still putting out today. So that's the way we're going to do this. 
So next we'll be taking out the amplifier and getting it set to have the new amplifier put in. And here we have the box with the amplifier removed. There's the amplifier. It's just a box within a box. Uh, 12 screws around the outside. You know, your uh, amplifier may be held in differently, but I had a Klipsch previously, and it was the same basic design. I had to rebuild that one as well. And again, Parts Express had to drop an amplifier that fit it. Now I did take out the driver because the amp did not want to come out. There was really nothing to grab. It was pretty solid. I pulled the driver and then one little push and it dropped right out. Now we'll wait for the new amplifier to arrive and We'll put it together and then we'll show you what's what. Here are the two amps side by side. They look pretty similar. The new one's on the right, the old one's on the left. Uh, the only difference appears to be labeling, otherwise they look identical. The new amp in a close-up shot, isolated shot, uh, pretty much exactly the same as the other one, as I said. Even the mounting holes lined up perfectly. And the back of the amp. The cables come out of the back, uh, so you only have to make one set of connections. Uh, it comes with spade lugs on it. I had to clip them off because I have spring-loaded uh, connectors on my uh, driver, so uh, I could no longer uh, use the cables as is. So it's simple, just clip and strip and hook it up. And here we're all done. The amplifier's in, the driver's reconnected and reinstalled, and it's hooked the back up to the system. I'm not running a test here. It works. I'm happy with it. And, uh, you know, it really was a simple fix. Now, although I didn't play the subwoofer for you at the end, it is working nicely now. It uh, is back to where it was. I have a nice amount of bass in the system. Uh, I am not one of those that likes a huge amount of bass. I like to keep it. Oh, what I would consider natural, but when you have special effects in the home theater, which is where this is used, it's there and it's pumping out the sound. And it really was a quick, simple, economical replacement and, you know, something to keep in mind. You know, I believe, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, I believe it was 150 bucks for the replacement. And... Uh, Frankly, the shipping was fantastic. I ordered it on Tuesday. I had it Thursday. And, you know, the results takes all of a uh, half hour to put everything back together and neaten up. Unless you do something like I did, there's a space, uh, base boost button on it that I, of course, didn't read the instructions before I did. So I had to pop the amplifier out to shift the switch over to the boost and then put it back in. So what do you do? Just teaches you, read the instructions. Good luck. Hope you enjoyed.